Hey, it's Silver, and this is Wo Long, Fallen Dynasty. So this is an attempt at a Souls-like that's taking place in the Three Kingdoms era of ancient China. So we're talking like around 180 AD, with a mix of historical and mythological stuff kind of melding together. Now, this is actually made by the team that made both of the Neo games. And in fact, this is kind of to Neo what Sekiro was to Dark Souls in, in a way. Basically, by that I mean it's not entirely like a full on Souls like with all of the stuff and build variety and things that that entails. It's less complicated, more tightly designed, more focused on a specific thing. Just like how Sekiro wasn't really a Souls like, it was, you know, taking the somewhat Dark Souls formula and then distilling it down into this very parry focused, high speed gameplay that was very different from what Dark Souls actually was at the end of everything, and that's effectively what this game is, but for the Neo franchise. It's taking the Neo formula and then sort of distilling it down into this sort of high-speed, uh, high-skill, parry-based combat system. But there are still some Souls-like trappings here, like for instance, the Souls, the idea that you kill things, get a currency that you can use to level up, and if you die, you lose it. Uh, this is done a little bit differently in this game, but it still has that same basic idea. Instead of Souls, it's Chi, and you gain Chi simply by killing enemies, and there are of course also usable items that are like clots of Chi that can give you a large amount at once. And instead of losing it all when you die and then having to go back to your bloodstain, you uh, you lose half of it when you die, half of the amount you're carrying, and uh, it does not fall on the ground. Instead, it will be sort of gained by the enemy that killed you. And you have to actually go and kill that enemy in order to get it back, a bit like how Bloodborne works, and uh, that allows you to get your other half back. And uh, the leveling also is a little bit different. Rather than having specific stats like strength, dexterity, intelligence, all those, you have a system that's based on the five Chinese elements, so like wood, metal, earth, all those. And uh, so you've got five different stats to actually put your points into, and they all affect various different things like the wood, uh, stat, for instance, affects your HP, and also, as you would expect, different types of weapons can scale with different stats, so improving those stats will improve the damage of those weapons and so on. This means that you have a very streamlined leveling experience in comparison to something like Dark Souls or Neo is the better comparison, of course. And uh, because in those games you have a bunch of different stats that you can actually improve, so narrowing it down to five stats instead definitely simplifies things. Although, again, this game is clearly going for a more tight design focus, so simplifying certain things is technically fine because that's what it's based around, right? If you're going into this game expecting like a full-sized Elden Ring or Soulsborne kind of experience, you're not gonna get that. It is more focused than that, it's smaller, it, it has less overall combat variety and things, in the same way that a lot of people going into Sekiro were disappointed that it wasn't just Dark Souls and Feudal Japan, you know what I mean? It was definitely different than that. This is kind of the same thing. If you're looking for Neo 3, this is not it. <laughs> but it does take the looting system from Neo, so you're gonna find all sorts of different pieces of gear, lots of weapons and armor, that all have uh, colored rarities that are represented by stars, like, you know, one through four star rarities and beyond. And each piece of gear will have various different action RPG stats assigned to it, you know, like martial arts damage, uh, chi, magic, cost, all sorts of things like that, just small percentage increment mods to various stats and things. It's not quite as loot heavy as the Neo games, but it, there is quite a bit of loot to find. And uh, it does a pretty good job of having a good amount of combat variety, even though it has a lot less than something like Neo 2, because there are still quite a few weapon types to discover. There's a lot of them are pretty fun actually as well, like the dual halberds in particular I find very enjoyable. But uh, you don't have as many moves, as many different skills and effects and stuff to learn as you do in something like Neo, especially in Neo 2, which is extremely varied, and uh, some might actually say that its combat system is a little bit over complicated. I actually quite like the way it is. I think it's neat how complex it is, but still, you could argue that it's got a lot of fat to trim. So uh, I don't really mind a game that's going for a similar idea, but scaling it down a little bit, you know, narrowing the focus. So you don't have all the various weapon skill trees and things in this game. Instead, each weapon has its own uh, basic normal hit combo that you can do, as well as, of course, your plunging attacks and jump attacks and that stuff. And it has a spirit attack, which we'll get onto in a minute, because the spirit gauge is absolutely key to understanding this game's combat system. And uh, you also will have a couple of martial arts. Martial arts are just like special weapon skills, have more powerful, flashy attacks that cost spirit to use. Pretty much every weapon will have one martial art that you can do. It's sort of randomly generated on that weapon drop, but higher quality weapons, higher rarity ones, will have two. And uh, there are also some like boss drop weapons and things that can have special unique skills that only appear on that weapon and won't generate randomly on a similar weapon of that type. And you'll be able to tell them apart because they'll have a sort of glowing orange name to show you that it's a unique martial art. 
as you level yourself up at certain thresholds, usually like roughly once every five levels or so, you'll gain a bunch of wizardry skill points, one for each of the phases, so five skill points. And uh, you can go into this wizardry skill tree, this is the main skill tree of the game, and uh, there's one big tree for each of the five elements, and these trees contain uh, spells that you can actually equip and use. And they all have various different themes, like for instance the wood tree tends to have regenerative or restorative spells and stuff, like the ability to leech health or things of that nature. Uh, the metal tree will have a lot of like poison causing stuff. You can go down the fire tree if you want to enchant your weapons with fire damage and all sorts of things of that nature. So this means that you do still have some build variety in this game, right? It's not like dead simple to the point that you have no variety at all. You still have a fair different we number of weapon types, not as many as Neo, but a good amount. And uh, they each have several different martial arts that they can come with. And you have all of your various wizardry spells that you can uh, spec into and equip. And all of that, of course, leads us to the combat system, which is the main focus of the game. This is a heavily combat-focused game and is very high speed. This is because the entire thing is based around deflecting, in a very similar way to something like Sekiro was based around uh, timing and parrying attacks as effectively as possible. This game is exactly the same. You simply press the B button or circle or whatever kind of control you're using, and uh, if you time it right, you will deflect an enemy attack. And you can deflect pretty much everything, from projectiles to melee hits to huge, big, unblockable attacks, all sorts of stuff. As long as you time it right, you can deflect it. You can even deflect thrown attacks like fire pots and even spells and stuff too, so you just gotta get the timings correct. And this leads us to the spirit gauge. So the spirit gauge is that eight segmented gauge that's below your health, and it is constantly decaying towards the middle. The middle zero spirit is always the sort of neutral point that it wants to return to. Taking damage and uh, blocking attacks and missing deflects and stuff like that will decrease your spirit and will actually give you negative spirit to the point that the orange side, the left side of the gauge, will fill up. And if this completely fills up and you get hit, you'll get stunned for a couple of seconds and you won't be able to defend yourself at all. And you'll probably die and or take a massive hit, so you definitely don't want that to happen. However, landing successful attacks, even blocked ones, uh, successfully parrying or uh, just dodging attacks and things of that nature, that will build your spirit gauge and actually give you positive spirit, which is the right side of the gauge, the blue side. And uh, you want this because the more spirit you have, the better you can do. You can do things like uh, spirit attacks, which are the replacement for heavy attacks. Spirit attacks can be done even with no spirit, but they're slower and less powerful. However, if you do them with spirit, they will you'll glow before you do it, and they'll basically become these much harder to defend, like unblockable huge attacks that do a ton of damage, and can also uh, decrease the maximum spirit gauge of your enemy for a while. And of course, all of your other actions cost spirit too, like the martial arts and the wizardry spells. This means that spells are kind of free in this game, technically. You can kind of spam them because they cost spirit, but your spirit is always decaying back to zero. So as long as you don't get hit and you wait long enough, you can cast a theoretically infinite number of spells. You just gotta time it right so that you don't get hit when you're super low spirit from casting something and then get stunned and die anyway. And of course, all of your enemies have spirit gauges too, and you want to build the orange side up so that you can break them. As you force them to block attacks, as you parry their attacks, deflect successfully, things like that, their spirit gauge will start to deplete, just like yours. And like I mentioned, if you land certain kinds of attacks, usually these are either heavy spirit attacks when you have some blue in your gauge to fuel them, or martial arts when you have blue in your gauge. If you land these, then it'll actually shrink the total size of your enemy's spirit gauge, making it even easier to break them because they'll have less that they can go into the red before it happens. And then once they completely bottom out and go fully into the red, they'll get stunned and you can use your spirit attack to do like a big execution move on them that does huge amounts of damage and is the main way you're actually going to be killing bosses because bosses don't take that much damage from basic hits most of the time unless you vastly over level them. Uh, so the main sort of bursts of damage that you're doing are when you are memorizing their attacks, deflecting them successfully, and then breaking their spirit gauge completely to deliver these huge big bursts of damage. This means that combat in this game is kind of a dance in between you and the enemy, trying to make sure you are getting your spirit gauge up in the blue as much as you can to give yourself some safety as well as some fuel for your more powerful attacks, and trying to rob the enemy of their spirits so that they can't do those more powerful attacks and you can try to break them. And the combat is sort of based around deflecting everything, right? You you don't even want to be blocking at all. Like, honestly, I don't even know why there's a block button in this game, because it's really disadvantageous to use it. However, deflecting is very smart and is what you're actually basing all of your encounters around, memorizing the enemy attacks, 
memorizing the timings for when they're just about to hit you and you can hit the deflect button at just the right time to parry them away. And uh, there are also these big red flashing attacks that enemies can do. Both normal enemies and bosses will make liberal use of these as you go through further throughout the game. And uh, these are unblockable, so the block button is even more useless against these, but deflecting them does huge damage to the enemy's spirit gauge. However, they are of course very, very powerful, which means if you miss the deflect, you will take a massive hit of damage straight to the face. And this is really what the harder fights, especially the boss fights, are actually based around these looking out for these big flashing red unblockable attacks because those are what build your spirit gauge and, and uh, deplete the enemy's spirit gauge the most out of any sort of deflection you can do. It's hitting these with the perfect timing that'll actually give you the biggest reward, the most advantage in a battle. So you're always looking out for these. And of course, if you can, sometimes you just want to double tap the deflect button to dodge out of the way. And that does build your spirit gauge a little bit if you dodge through an attack with the right timing but it doesn't really deplete the enemy's gauge, so it's something that you don't want to be doing too often, and of course dodging does cost a fair bit of your spirit gauge as well too, so ideally you want to deflect as much as possible. To top the combat system off, you also have a spirit that follows you around. Uh, you can equip different ones at the uh, flags that this game has, which are basically like shrines or bonfires. And uh, each of these big spirits has two different attacks. It, it just simply is its own gauge that builds up as you deal and take damage and deflect things and all that sort of stuff. Once it's full, you can either have an enchant happen where they will sort of fly into your weapon and enchant it with a certain damage type, as well as give you a boost to certain stats, depending on the spirit you're using. Or you can do a big summon where the spirit Spirit comes out, does one big attack, and then leaves, which is usually not great for a boss fight, but is more useful in like a more desperate combat scenario out in the levels. Now the levels themselves are, the whole game is level based, right? It's not open world or anything like that. You go from level to level, but the levels are pretty large and have a lot of exploration and a lot of optional stuff because another weird thing about this game's combat system is the morale system. You'll notice that everything has a sort of number and a green circle next to it. That's your morale, and this is sort of like a general measure of your combat power. Every time you go to a new level, your morale starts at like 0 to 5-ish in that range, it depends on the exact level. And you don't want to encounter enemies that are a significantly higher morale than you because they'll do tons of damage to you and you'll just barely scratch them. So you want to raise your morale first before actually going to that area of the map. And uh, you raise your morale, one, just by successfully combating enemies, right? Like more deflects, more kills and stuff raises this meter. But also, as you find those flags and actually take them, the new respawn points or checkpoints, your uh, morale will raise. The sort of floor, the minimum amount that you can have will raise. And there are also these other smaller flags that don't act as respawn points, but just uh, raise your morale just a little bit, like one each time. And uh, as long as you find all of these throughout a level, you'll usually end up at around 20 minimum morale. So even if you die, you'll still go back down to 20 and no lower you will lose a level of morale if you get hit by one of those big red unblockable attacks and don't deflect it. Uh, dodging it doesn't lose you any, but taking it right to the face does. However, completely spirit gauge breaking an enemy will also lower their morale. So this is a good strategy on bosses. You'll be building yours up by successfully deflecting as many of their attacks as possible and then lowering theirs in order to uh, do more damage to them basically because you'll be lowering it every time you break them and raising yours every time you deflect their big unblockable mega attacks. And uh, as long as you do this at a good pace, you'll eventually do more damage to them and you'll be able to down them faster by uh, outpacing their morale. You'll also have some uh, famous, like, Three Kingdoms era generals and officers and stuff that'll show up, like Cao Cao, for instance, he's chilling, he's there, and uh, they can just follow you around and uh, help you in combat and stuff like that. There are some missions where they'll just be there by default, and there are also uh, other missions where you can use these things called Tiger Seals, which you mostly get by getting revenge for other players. If there's, uh, sometimes there'll be these purple grave markers around the place, and those are kind of like bloodstains in Dark Souls, they show you where other players have died. And uh, an enemy will have a sort of purple glowing morale gauge to show you that they're the ones that killed someone. And if you're able to kill them while this is happening, you'll get some accolades which you can spend on uh, other gear and stuff back at the home base. And you'll also get some tiger seals occasionally. And these tiger seals can be spent to summon NPCs to help you out. So if you're having problems with a specific part of a level that you just can't seem to get through, or if there's one specific boss that's giving you trouble or something like that, you can spend some of these seals to summon a couple friends and uh, have some help. And of course you can also summon other players this way as well, I should say. 
There are invasions as well. You can turn off normal player invasions if you want to, but if you don't, there are like Dark Souls style player invasions. And there are also NPC invasions that will happen. These are usually really fun because they have the same skill set that you do, right? They have spells, they have deflects, they have all that stuff, martial arts. So you have to be careful about fighting them. And sometimes it's a case of whoever attacks first loses because you don't want to get deflected. I should also mention that this game is really hard, by the way, like it is very challenging. I think a lot of people are going to get filtered by the first boss because the first phase of the first boss is a really good final exam for making sure you understand the deflect and the spirit gauge mechanics. He's just a really solid, not too difficult boss. But then his second phase kicks in and he's really, really hard. He basically demands like absolute perfection of deflect timings and understanding of how the mechanics work and stuff like that. So he's not just a final exam anymore, like he's actually a very demanding first tutorial boss that makes sure you have a perfect understanding of how the system works. The whole spirit gauge thing and the deflection thing and the unblockable attacks and all that stuff, you have to be like super down with all that in order to get past him because he gets really challenging in his second phase. In fact, in my opinion, he's actually harder than any of the next like four bosses that come after him. But that is Wo Long. It is a really solid, uh, distilled Souls-like, you know? You have to go into it understanding that it's not like a full-sized, huge build variety kind of game like Neo 2 was, and is a, a bit more of a narrow focus. But if you're up for that narrow focus, if you enjoy its base combat system with this whole spirit gauge and deflection mechanics and stuff, then you'll have a really good time, because it is very well designed in my opinion. The bosses are really memorable and very fun. The levels are well put together and enjoyable to explore, and the over all combat system is a blast to play. I still personally prefer stuff like Neo 2 from these guys because of that huge focus on variety, but variety isn't always everything. Even though I happen to be a very variety focused gamer myself, I still see the value in something that's going for a more narrow focus and pulling it off to a high degree of skill and success. So my opinion on Wo Long is it's quite good. It's actually a very good time, and uh, it's an impressive feat to change the Neo combat system in such a way and still make it work quite well. I do think that it doesn't run as well as it should. On my system, it's pretty much fine, but I also have a massively overkill system for a game like this. So it doesn't run as well as it should, perhaps, and I think your mileage may vary when it comes to more mid-range systems, whether or not this game has a stable frame rate or not. So obviously I can't comment on what everyone's system will be like, but I do think the game could use a bit more optimization in that regard. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for watching. I will put a link to this game's Steam store page in the description below this video, and I'll see you next time.